Hello and welcome to another episode of Spiral Physics Education and we're going to be looking at waves in this lesson and what a wave is. Uh, we're going to be looking at longitudinal waves and examples of those, transverse waves and examples of those, we're looking at the relationship between frequency and time periods, peaks and troughs, wavelength and wave fronts, and we're going to also be looking at displacement and amplitude. So quite a lot uh, being covered in this introduction to waves. So start off with uh, what are waves? And this often comes up in exam questions. So uh, waves uh, transfer energy and, uh, and also sometimes information, um, but they don't transfer matter. And it's important that you remember that there is no matter transferred. So think about when someone talks to you, uh, you're getting uh, sound energy and you're also getting information along that sound wave. But what you're not getting is gunk from their lungs and their mouth going into your ear, unless, of course, they're really, really close to you. Uh, so let's go on to longitudinal waves and you do get this quite a lot. So it's a very common exam question defining what a longitudinal wave is. Uh, so we have to use scientific words here to, to make sure that we get um, as, m as many marks as possible really. So we've got to refer to oscillations or vibrations and we've also got to mention the direction of energy transfer when we're defining what waves are. So if we look at uh, this wave, this is a, a, a diagram, a, 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 an animation of a, a longitudinal wave. Um, and uh, we're going to try and put oscillations and direction of energy transfer together. So if we look at it and look at it very closely, you can see that the, the red oscillating object on the left is the thing that's, that's producing the sound wave. And if we look, there's clearly there's a, there's a direction, there's a motion of energy from left to right. You can see it flowing very clearly from left to right. But if you look at an individual particle, each individual particle is just moving backwards and forwards. So in terms of uh, the oscillations, uh, the oscillations are going in this direction, left to right. And in terms of energy transfer, well, the energy transfer is, um, is from left to right. So we've got to try and put that together to describe what, how, how to describe this particular type of wave. And for, um, for longitudinal waves, the oscillations are parallel to the direction of energy transfer. You've got to use the word parallel in there. So the oscillations are parallel to the direction of energy transfer. And that's what you write down in an exam when defining a longitudinal wave. So examples of longitudinal waves. Now, there aren't many of these. Um, the most common one is, is, is sound. Um, and not so common. Uh, it depends if you've done this yet or if um, you've done it in geography or if you've learned it in physics or in chemistry sometimes, is that there, are, there is a seismic wave, um, a wave that's produced um, after an earthquake um, that is also uh, a longitudinal wave, but you've got to say it's a P wave. So seismic P waves um, are also an examples of uh, longitudinal waves, and P stands for primary. Um, so these longitudinal waves, uh, they require a medium, um, and uh, without that medium, you are not going to get um, a transfer of energy. Um, and, and for that reason, they're often referred to, sound waves are often referred to as pressure waves because you require high pressure and low pressure. Um, so you, you might have seen your, this is supposed to represent a slinky, you might have seen your teacher or you indeed yourselves might have used a slinky to sort of play around um, in producing different types of waves. But if you take a snapshot of, uh, of the slinky while you're making a, a longitudinal wave, it might look something like this. And you get these areas here where the, the loops um, of, of the slinky spring are close together. And we call those uh, compressions, and, and they're linked to high pressure. So if you can imagine um, sound waves in air, where the air particles get really, really close together, then that's a high pressure region, and we call that compression. 
And in between those, as these uh, loops of the slinky are further apart, um, we call them rarefactions, and um, that's where the air particles um, will be further apart. Uh, and you can imagine that because they're further apart, we call that low pressure. So sound waves are made up of high pressure regions and low pressure regions. And the high pressure, we call them compressions, and uh, the low pressure, we call them rarefactions. So let's look at transverse waves. So it's the same thing. We, we've got to refer to oscillations or, or vibrations, and we've also got to refer to the direction of energy transfer. That's the only difference between transverse waves and longitudinal waves. So here's a transverse wave. So it's a, a similar animation to the last one. And, and again, if you, if you imagine that um, the objects causing the oscillations on the left-hand side, you can clearly see that the wave travels from left to right. And if you look at individual particles, you can just see that they're moving up and down. So if we think about the oscillations, well, the oscillations are moving up and down. And if you think about the energy transfer, well, the energy transfer is from left to right. So we're going to try and put that observation together in a sentence so that we can describe what a transverse wave is. So remember, we've still got to refer to oscillations and energy transfer. So this is how you do it. The oscillations are this time perpendicular to the direction of energy transfer. So the definitions between the longitudinal wave and the transverse waves are very similar. The only difference is, is that word perpendicular. So for uh, longitudinal waves, you use parallel. For transverse waves, you remove the word parallel and you replace it with perpendicular. So examples of transverse waves, um, so, well, uh, gamma rays, we've got x-rays, UV, visible light, infrared, microwaves, radio waves. Um, and they make up something called the electromagnetic spectrum. Um, and you can imagine that they, they don't need, they don't require a medium to travel because they travel through space where there's uh, no solids, liquids, or gases in between. And that means you can travel through a vacuum, and that's how we get information and energy from uh, places like the sun to Earth. And uh, there's also another seismic wave. That's why I just can't say seismic waves are an example of longitudinal waves, because um, there are two different waves. And there is a seismic S wave that is a transverse wave. They stand for secondary waves. Um, but um, you've got seven other examples of transverse waves above them in the electromagnetic spectrum. So I often refer to um, frequency and time periods when we're dealing with waves, so it's a, an ideal opportunity to, to reflect on, on what they mean. So um, definition of frequency, and these are things that you need to learn. And uh, it's quite simply the number of waves, oscillations or vibrations, if you prefer, in one second. It's measured in hertz. And that's it for the frequency. And you need to know that. For time period, well, a little bit trickier for time period. It's the time taken for one wave, or oscillation or vibration, if you prefer. And because it's time, it's measured in seconds. So if we really think about those two relationships, uh, or those two definitions, there is a relationship between frequency and time period. So we're going to look at that by using an example. Let's uh, think about a child watching 10 waves break onto the beach in, let's say, 20 seconds. And think what the time period is. So I'm having issues with uh, my uh, video uh, camera at the moment. But so you can imagine that uh, I'm on the right hand side of this. And this is my thought process going on here. So what I'm thinking is the time taken for one wave is the time period. So we've got 10 waves and 20 seconds. So we've got 10 waves in 20 seconds. There'll be one wave every two seconds. So the time period is two seconds. So that just makes a bit of sense, a bit of logic there. So what's the frequency then? So well, I've got another thought process here, uh, is that the number of waves or oscillations in one second. So we've got 
20 seconds for 10 waves. So one second for half a wave. That means the frequency is half a hertz or 0 0.5 hertz. And if we look at two seconds and we look at half a hertz, there's a relationship there. That means that frequency is one over time period. So that's the mathematical relationship uh, if you wanted to calculate one from the other. Okay, so one thing that we need to um, be able to do is use key terms in physics. Um, it's our vocabulary, and it's uh, there is there isn't that much. It's not like French or German, but uh, using vocabulary uh, accurately um, is the key to to success really in the sciences. So uh, here are some key terms for transverse waves that you need to be able to use. So um, this line here through the center of this transverse wave, this is called uh, the equilibrium position, often preferred to as well as uh, as the undisturbed position. So that's where the uh, wave would be, or the particles, or the uh, medium would be, without a wave present. Um, we have a peak, uh, which is the maximum positive displacement, so uh, that's an example of a peak. And we have a trough, and its definition is the maximum negative displacement, so it's not the minimum displacement, but the maximum negative, which is that point there. As an example. We also have this distance here which we call the amplitude and the uh, which can also be the same as that one actually um, and the amplitude is maximum displacement so it's the maximum distance from the undisturbed position and we also have wavelength which is the distance from peak to adjacent peak which is there, or really technically um, the shortest distance between two points on a wave that are in phase. Um, so if you're not sure what that means, uh, you can think of it as distance from peak to adjacent peak, or indeed trough to adjacent trough. And you can also think of it as there. So that's the trickiest one uh, because uh, it's the shortest distance between two points on a wave that are doing the same thing. And that's what's happening there. So uh, another term um, that you need to be aware of is wave front. And um, it's a bit of a strange concept. So this is supposed to represent a 3D image of a wave. You sort of can imagine it going past you um, while you're looking at the ocean. And the thing about wave fronts is that um, it's a line that joins together the points on the wave that have the same displacement and velocity all at the same point in space. So if we're looking at that diagram of, of water moving past us, uh, that there is a wave front. We've just joined all those peaks together. And they have the same displacement and the same velocity. Uh, they share uh, all of those um, mechanics type um, uh, terms uh, together so we, we can we can represent that as a as a wave front and uh, we can do it with the same um, the, the the peak of the, the next wave ah, and the next one so we've got a series of wave fronts there um, and the thing to uh, realize is that uh, the wave fronts are drawn perpendicular to the direction of the wave so uh, what they would look like uh, from above is something like this and then they'd move in that direction like that. So that was how we would draw a wave because it's quite it's quite fiddly to try and draw transverse waves with peaks and troughs and everything. So we, we tend to draw wave fronts. So uh, in summary, um, then we have uh, an equilibrium um, or an undisturbed position and that's the position of the particles when there are no vibrations. We have displacement, which is the distance from the undisturbed position. We have amplitude, which is maximum displacement. We have peak, 
which um, isn't slang. Uh, it actually means uh, maximum positive displacement. And we also have trough, which means uh, the point of maximum negative displacement. We have wavelength, which uh, is the shortest distance between two points of wave that are in phase, uh, which can be thought of as the shortest distance between two peaks or two troughs. We have frequency, which is the number of uh, waves or vibrations per second measured in Hertz. And we have time period, which is the time taken for one wave or vibration measured in seconds. And we have wave front, which is just a line that joins points on a wave that are in phase, technical term, and we always draw them at 90 degrees to the velocity. Well, I hope you enjoyed uh, that episode on waves and including transverse waves and longitudinal waves and all those key terms. I um, hope you found it useful. Uh, subscribe to the channel um, and uh, hopefully uh, these uh, videos will help you improve your understanding of physics and uh, get those grades up and see you next time on Spiral Physics Education. Take care. Goodbye.